your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Oh, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you want a battle with either that you will say you're wrong. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. Ada Ford, queen of rock and roll, brought uh, dogs with her. Big, big wolfhounds wearing uh, doggy sweaters. They're what, heavy metal uh, denim jackets. They look cool. It's a chihuahua, <laughs> and this guy's like a chihuahua mix, or is he all chihuahua no, too? No, she's chihuahua. She's, she? Yeah. She's a little butch to be she's a She's long hair. Is she a lesbian? Uh, yeah. Your dog? Yeah, she Whoa. screws her she, little... She uh, took umbrage with that. Lesbian? The dog lesbian? got mad. Good girl. There's nothing wrong with that, my love. Well, Good girl. Lita She's... Ford is on more stories right now, and there are like 14 dogs in my garage. I got my dogs, Lita's dog, her uh, business manager, Sarah. Maddie Boy's got his dog here. It's a damn dog party, and uh, but your dog's are wearing sweaters. It's nice and warm. And when your guitar Denim jackets. Denim jackets. But it's like a, instead of- Heavy black... metal denim jackets. I like it, because it doesn't look like uh, jokes. Like It looks like- uh, it looks like Slayer, but instead it's a slobber. <laughs> yeah. And I like it. Megapet. Megapet. Yeah, Megapet <laughs> instead of Megadeth. Ozzy Posborn. Ozzy Posborn. Now, do the bands have to sign off on that? <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, you might want to find out. These were Christmas gifts for How the great dogs. would it be if you found a stray dog and was wearing a denim uh, jacket that, oh, just said, wow. that just said runaway? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> or Cherry Bomb or something. Yeah, you know? Cherry that'd Bomb. That'd be killer. Literally. <laughs> Literal run, a literal runaway wearing yeah. a runaway denim oh, jacket. Oh, that'd be so cute. I'd have to take him home. How, you, yeah, naturally, especially if he had the denim, <laughs> denim dog yeah. thing. So you, uh, you got a bunch of dates I want to get to early uh, coming up in January. And you guys, Lita Ford, by the way, you, uh, you're it. Like you, I don't. I, I think you're the most genuine article of any heavy metal. Certainly, I don't want to separate the men from the women, but. The fact that the Runaways, that you guys were up and running and on the road at like 16 years old, there's nothing like more punk than that. There's nothing more yeah. metal than that. You were like the embodiment of anti-establishment. What were your parents thinking letting you <laughs> go on the road at 16 years old to other countries and other states? They weren't. <laughs> they weren't? <laughs> they weren't were thinking. You, were you a runaway? No, no, no. I had great parents. My parents were so supportive. My mother had this uh, really thick, thick Italian accent, and uh, she would say to me, Oh, Lita, the Black Sabbath is so nice. Play the Black Sabbath for me. Oh, and the Black Magic Woman, the Santana. Play me the Santana one more time. You're, you're oh, and Italian. the Judas Priest. Oh, Lita. And Alice Cooper. It's He's the coolest so nice. mom I've ever heard of in my life. My mom's listening to Glenn Miller, Little Brown Jug. <laughs> Hey, Here comes Mitch. In. Is this your Mitch, your guitarist? Yes. Everybody's coming. It's, hey, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. How are you, buddy? Welcome aboard. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. How are you? Grab some pine over here. Your business depends on software. All your apps, your databases, your social media, everything. So the last thing you need is a problem with it. New Relic Software Analytics gives you powerful, real-time insights into your software so you can spot problems and fix them before they become big problems. Check it out free. It's free, you guys, for 30 days. Go to newrelic.com slash radio, N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C dot com slash radio, newrelic.com slash radio. Now more with Lita Ford. All right. So Mitch, uh, Lita Ford's guitarist, has settled in. Uh, there's now 14 <laughs> dogs in your lap. The dogs love Mitch. You have animal magnetism, man. He is. <laughs> Hold the mic real close to your mouth when you talk just because... They're not expensive mics. <laughs> I got you. How long have you two been playing together? Oh, boy. That's it, kind of a, a... We've known each other for 30 years. I mean, a long time. And we've played together since we first met each other, but we haven't really done it officially until the last two years. 
How many times does it happen where somebody who, you know, you're a solo act, Lita, and then, like, but Mitch, you've said many times, and uh, through correspondence with p- powers that be, it's like, she's bringing her guitarist. Like, Mitch is your guy. Yeah. Like, how do you settle on that? What is it about a guitarist that you're like, I don't really want to be on stage with anybody else except Mitch. Mitch is the guy that completely gets what I'm doing, considering you're a vicious guitarist yourself. You what is it that he does? Him? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, Your voice changed, Lita. <laughs> no, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry. No, I, don't I get... told you I was a little hoarse You're a little today. hoarse. Mitch, what is it? How do you become someone's personal guitarist? You know, there's just, there's a natural feel, you know, in how you learn how to play guitar, what you listen to when you're growing up, what you like. You have a way of attacking a guitar, and everyone has one, you know, and, and ours... Our two styles just really, really fall together. We know each other so well, we can kind of look at each other and know what's going to go on, know where if if somebody veers a little bit off course, it's no big deal because the other can catch the other. Is it like yeah, we got uh, each other's back? On is stage. it like a duel sometimes? Like uh, you know, like ja- like uh, Keith and Ronnie Wood, like where they kind of duel back and forth that sword play, or is it like uh, it is one? Is there no? Is there a definitive lead and a definitive rhythm? I'd call it more a duet than a duel because we're not trying yeah. to blow each other off the stage. In fact, that's part of what makes what we do work is that. Everything we do towards each other seems to be complementary to the other. Yeah. We're not trying to go, you know, hey, you can't play this, ha ha ha. Right. You know, it's it's more like I love the way <laughs> she hears stuff and and vice versa. Yeah. And, and we, yeah, you know, I kind of call it. You look, you know, it's like when you shoot at a, a target, you aim at the yellow bullseye. There's, you know. A lot of different people, there's a lot of different targets you can aim at. We're always seeming to aim for the same target. Yeah. That's cool. And right before you got here, Alita was telling us about her Italian mother saying, Oh, Alita, the Black Sabbath, I love it. Yeah. Like, I've never yeah. heard of a mom that cool. Like, your mom really dug heavy metal that she much? She was so cool. She, uh, she never questioned me when I came home at four in the morning. She never said, You know, you smell like cigarettes and alcohol. Where have you been? She would never ask me. I would just pass her as she was going to work and I was going to bed. She was. What about where does school fit in? Because you were a teenager. Yeah. I went to school every day. When I got out of school, I would go from Long Beach. I would drive uh, south an hour to pick up Sandy, the drummer, in Huntington Beach. And then the two of us would drive up to North Hollywood to rehearse. And then I would take her home to Huntington Beach, drop her off, and then drive back to Long Beach, go to bed by midnight, and then get up the next morning and go to school. Why? Did you wear, like, rock and roll clothes to school? No, nah, I wore jeans and T-shirts. And the, you, were, you were a Long Beach kid. And but I, I would always get in trouble because I never wore bras. So I was always being sent to the nurse's office. My dad would have to bring me a bra to school. Is that a medical situation? I this just hated old, him. This 15-year-old isn't wearing a, a bra. We better call on a doctor. Why well, big boobs? What creeps? So I think, it, I think the teachers were getting hard-ons or something. Long Beach Public School. Send her to a doctor because <laughs> she's not wearing a bra. We know just the remedy for that. Uh, of course, uh, Cherry Curry, Joan Jett. Jackie Fox, uh, Sandy West, and uh, Jackie Fox, rest in peace. Uh, uh, Sandy West. Sandy West? Yeah. San- Jackie's not dead yet. Ja- yeah, well, you didn't hear? No, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> Apparently, uh, you're dead. I typed in Lita Ford, yeah, and it said, Lita, it said Lita Ford dead. Yeah, I've died a few times. You this died year. November 13th on a jet ski accident in Turks yeah. Caicos. Yeah. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. For a dead rock and roll <laughs> goddess. You look thank good. You. This is the best looking zombie in America right I'll now. I'll say, yeah. uh, you know, Ozzy uh, has to bite the heads off of bats. You just sit at yes. home comfortably and let people write Probably that you're numb. dead comfortably dead how uh how surprised were people uh the next night when you walked out on stage not dead it was pretty it was pretty awful actually when i died the first time i think it was a couple how many times ago. have you died on internet hoaxes i usually die once a year what is it about you that they pick you in the death pool you, um, i got you living a long time i'm looking at you you look good you're you're in good spirits you look I pretty I healthy i have a freaky ex-husband that likes to i i'm not sure if it's him but i i would bet that it probably is him that's doing that. You've been through some trials and tribulations that I'll stay away from. Cause yeah. I'm sure you don't want to, you know, there's m- other people involved that 
yeah. may, may not be old enough to vote that we want to keep out of this. Yeah. Uh, so at f- s- Runaways, when you guys hook up with Kim Fowley, how old are you when you all wind up a band? <clears throat> um, me, I was the oldest, and I was 17 when the record came out, the first record. Now me the, and Joan were 17. Joan. Even though it says 16 on the record. Well, you got to. She's you're full gonna, of crap. You're going to call she's it. She's three days younger than me. Three oh, days. Oh, so you were, you were listed as 17. She was listed as 16. Uh-huh. Well, she's smart. You is guys that what that is? Or I is guess. a liar? Well, it bothers you to this day. Yeah. You, well, you're, you're the one that brought it up. Well, she's lying. She's the same age as me. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you both Three look, days. You both look fantastic, and you both are uh, excellent at what Thank you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Usually, in a band, there's there's every band has like lead singer syndrome, and there's an alpha mm-hmm. male. But in an all girl, teenage girl band like the Runaways, is there an alpha female? Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. And now you shred. I was looking up at some old YouTube videos, and I was stunned at 17 years old that you got after the guitar like that. Maybe that's why your mom. Love Black Sabbath so much because she heard you playing it because it's impressive. Yeah. So you you were the oldest one. Yeah. And you were the alpha female. So it was yeah. it, it was not a democracy. No, I I um I was the one that always asked the questions and I was the one that was always uh, the one that was pushing the band ahead and and uh, I was the 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 more business uh, you know come on let's get the sound check uh, this doesn't sound right let's do it again. Um, this, the, you're late for this photo session. Where the hell have you been? You know, I was the one cracking the whip. How did you like the movie, The Runaways? I actually didn't see it. I don't think anybody else did either. <laughs> Good. Kristen Stewart is Joan Jett. And, yeah, uh, who yeah. played, oh, Dakota Fanning? No, she played, uh, um, Cherry Bomb, right? Scout Taylor Compton played me. Yeah. I wanted to recast it. There's a bunch of girl comics that I tweeted and you can look, I'll show them to you when we're done. Uh, Jen Kirkman should have played Joan Jett and Amy Schumer should have played you. Oh God. And, uh, I had Jim Florentine. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> Jim Florentine is Jackie Fox. I thought that would have been looked. Is lo- Jackie Fox? I thought you were going to say Kim Fowley. No, I wanted to play Kim Fowley. Oh. But I think Michael Sheen played him in the movie. Or, no, a British guy played him, obviously, right? Kim Fowley was the no guy I, I don't know. who got you guys all together. He was yes. basically like uh, Campbell, uh, Malcolm McLaren, yeah, yeah. but for girl punk bands in the United States. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he used to work in the sex industry. This guy was like a deplorable person. And somehow he managed to get a whole bunch of 16-year-old girls to go, we're in. <laughs> Is that the allure of uh, like a shady guy? Like if if a, a if like a nice guy approached you, uh, degenerate children at that time, would you have been like square beat it? Did you at that time need a guy like Kim Fowley with uh, maybe a little amoral side to him to to uh, well, he make gave it more... us the rap of a lifetime. Yeah, you, you know, you couldn't you couldn't refuse his rap. He, he you're gonna be rock stars. You're gonna tour the world. You're going to make lots of money. You're going to meet all kinds of other rock stars and you're going to play arenas and you're going to be a superstar. And I just thought, fuck, how can I refuse this? Right. You know, and at the time I was just, uh, you know, barely 16 when we first started rehearsing and writing and. I it's, couldn't say no. It's amazing because, like, if I if I was Kim Fowler and I was talking to Mitch, I'd be like, "You're going to meet so many chicks," but like that's off the table with an all girl band for the most part. Uh, you know, so like that's all, so it's just rock stars, rock stars, rock stars. You guys are going to make a ton of money, and you buy in. At what point in the relationship with Kim Fowler do you realize, "Oh my God!" Like this, this is a horrible person. <laughs> I never thought he was a horrible person. Oh, you didn't think he was a horrible person? No. I thought there was a whole bunch of, excuse me, as no, we play footsie no. under the table. I, I, You know what? Between you and Rufus Wainwright, I'm not sure who I enjoyed playing footsie with the most. <laughs> uh, I, I just, there's so much uh, detritus about him on the internet about just, well, yeah, I believe everything I read on the internet. You should know that up front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you never had any problems with him? No, I really didn't. I didn't. I lived with him for a short period of time. With Kim Fowler. Yeah. And but you had to. So then, why did the band break up? 
Why did the Runaways break up? It was is it the old Neil Young? It's better to burn out than to fade away. Because you guys burnt out quick. You burned bright, and then you were done. You're just yeah. done. Yeah. Well, we grew up. You know, we grew up. We were at the end of our teenage years, and we both we all realized. Joan and I both realized that we didn't want to stay in the same musical direction. We wanted to go in different musical directions, and um, the band was doing a lot of drugs at the time, and we just kind of fell apart. It, it, we weren't we weren't really a team at that at the end of the Runaways. Um, we're looking, Cherie we're, had quit the band, and yeah. Joan was the lead singer, and we were going through bass players like toilet rolls. Mm-hmm. So it was we were done in it my was house. That's time. a lot of bass players. Yeah, my house too. I go a lot. <laughs> Maybe, I think it's all the coffee. If we get a coffee sponsorship, Maddie boy, it's over. Charmin, you guys only. Um, but what was it? Three years, start to finish. The Runaways? Um, no, it was about five years. Five years? 75 to 1980. And then the, uh, Cherie was in the band from 76 to 78. Uh, and then Jackie quit in 78. So uh, Jackie and Cherie quit early and w- were replaced by Vicky Blue. And Joan took over the lead vocals. How do you guys all have... These are all your real names, for the most part? I, I don't think Joan's last name is Jet. No. But Lita Ford's your name. Yes. I, 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 you know, I know, that I know. Yes. And like everybody else, like your guys' name, it's like central casting. It's, it's, it's almost like if you guys weren't the Runaways, the band in real life, they would have had to have made the movie The Runaways <laughs> about 16-year-old girls that go out on the road and cause hell and d- do drugs cool. and meet dudes and drink and play rock and roll and yeah. get famous. That'd be pretty cool. Any regrets of the band? All right, better not any regrets because that's a bullshit corporate question, and you're better than that. Why not uh, a Runaways reunion? Why not just get the living members together and go out and just make a ton of dough? Uh, having trouble with one member that you don't want to say. Yeah, I know it's Joan Jett. You Why can not? ask her when you see her. Who but Joan? Hell, yeah, you can allegedly. ask her. You're yeah. saying allegedly? It's it could Joan. be Joan. It is oh, Joan. Really? It's it should, she's just not into. She's it. the alpha male. Is that what it is? I don't know. You said you were the alpha female. Maybe she's the alpha. Maybe she's doesn't she's need you guys. She's the alpha male. She covered uh, Crimson and Clover real well. That's Little drummer terrible. boy. What does she need you guys for with original material? She's I don't doing know. Covers. Yeah, right. No shit. But she's I, cool as hell. You guys are all cool as hell. Like, I can't even say anything negative about Joan Jett because she's Joan Jett. Yeah, she's cool. She's uh, cool. I know you can probably because you spend five years of your life uh, the best and worst. Is it the best and worst five years of your life at the same time? No, it was never the worst. Never? Never? No. Then why did you say that you grew up? That's why you guys broke up. Well, it but was if you like grow going up, through let me, real college. Quick. But I would say that if you grew up, then you could see what Kim Fowler was telling you. You, you could see the end game of a ton of money and yeah. a ton of all that. And all we got to do is hold the line and hold it together. To me, growing up as a corporate sellout myself, personally, not you, me, is the end game is if we just keep this together, even if we don't like each other, we take separate cabs home from the gigs. We're teenagers. Yeah, that's you really, know? it all comes down to that. We were teenagers. We just wanted to rock and roll. But uh, it just it just fell apart, you know. There was, nobody was to blame. We all ended on good terms. Yeah. And uh, Shri and I just did a Christmas single together. Mitch and I wrote it. Yeah. So you guys have a Christmas album coming out. And by the way, I want to hit Single, Lita not an album. Oh, Christmas single. An yeah. original Christmas single? Yes. How paid would you be if that became just a Christmas song forever, like Mel Torme, like the Christmas song? Hopefully How, damn well good. What's the name of the song? Rock This Christmas Down. Rock This Christmas Down. Is mm-hmm. it, you know, everybody's doing the Christmas albums now. Like Bootsy Collins put one out and everybody winds up putting one out. But it seems like you and Bootsy are the only ones that did original material. I think uh, Gary Howey did too. Yeah. Yeah, he recorded something. I, I don't know what. I haven't heard it, but he told me he recorded something. Well, when you hear it, come back and just we'll okay. insert. It's great. Or awesome. I didn't like it so much. Awesome. Uh, uh, January 9th, uh, Lita Ford at Whiskey A Go Go. Mitch, I assume you will be there. I will be there too. What kind of guitar are you using, my man? We are using my favorite guitar in the world. I bought this guitar off the wall, brand new in 1978. It sat in a in a storage unit in SIR in New York for about ten and a half years. My manager calls me up and says, my ex-manager says, you want your guitar back? Oh, that's where it is. Got the guitar back, and I've never put it down since. And it's 1978 Les Paul Pro. 
I'm surprised you're not using something off of, uh, you know, LitaFordOnline.com. She's selling guitars on the in- on the internet, and you just completely are uh, she, biting the hand of feed you, She charges me too much. You're damn right she does. She's a businesswoman. How do you think she affords denim jackets for her chihuahuas? I get them for my bass player. <laughs> that she did you, the chihuahua is your bass player? No, 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 But no, you said no, my bass no. player and you held the chihuahua like no, right no, here, I my bass the player. jacket from my bass player. This was a gift. Let me tell you something. If you could teach one of those chihuahuas to play bass, you don't need Joan Jett <laughs> anymore. Well, she can't play bass anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's only four strings. It's, is it easier to play bass than it is to play uh, six strings, obviously? Or no? It's yeah. just totally different. Gift. Yeah, I think Mitch so. Mitch is vis- violently shaking his head no. No. It's kind of like NASCAR. It's easier to drive around the track, but to do it really well as fast as the fast guys do it gets tough. Same thing about bass. It's easier to play if you want to pick some notes, but we know how hard it is to find a bass player yeah. that you really like. You can find 100 guys who can hit the notes, but it's not what notes you're hitting. It's how you're it's hitting how them. It's how you're hitting them. And Lita yeah. Ford and your band, you guys have become Spinal Tap with bass players instead We've of We've got drummers. a great bass player with us now. Who is it now? Marty O'Brien. Yeah, I never liked him. Oh, Marty. January 9th. <laughs> January 9th, uh, Lita Ford <laughs> is at Whiskey A Go-Go. January 10th at the Hard Rock, Co- uh, Hard Rock Cosell. You remember when he used to do Monday Night Football? I'm a Hard Rock Cosell. Uh, is that his name on the Flintstones? Hard Rock Cosell? Maybe. All right. Now, let me start this over. January 9th, Lita Ford, Whiskey A Go-Go. January 10th, Hard Rock Cafe Vinyl in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the very next night, this is cool, January 11th, is it M15 or M15? M15. M15. I want to make sure I get it right. And that's in Corona, California. We'll promote those hard. January 9th, January 10th, January 11th. Hollywood, get rallied. Vegas, a lot of Vegas people out there listening to the podcast. And Corona, California. Uh, you get to see Lita Ford at, uh, at Corona, California. Do you know the name of the place in Corona? Uh, M15. Oh, it's right here. Why, you think I need sleep? My God. <laughs> Mitch, what did you put rattle. in my drink? No, I don't. Uh, you said you like Kim Fowler and you still had no problems with him. But of yeah. course, but anything I've read about the band and Kim was that there was uh, verbal and sexual abuse from Kim to the band. I didn't come out of my mouth. No. All right. So that's, is, that, is that just a contract buster? Like, I wasn't what? there those days. No. Those were my days off. Those are your days off? Yeah. Do, do we you had think that's a sex lessons? Was that were there sex I lessons? I didn't need them. Did you hear about them from other members in the band? <laughs> yeah. Oh really? So this act maybe it did actually happen. Yeah. Oh. I thought yeah. you were gonna say it was all a bunch of hooey and a no. way to get a break out of contract. No. Oh, Kim, come on. What are you doing, Kim Fowler? Although I did live with him, and uh, coming home one day, he would have sex on the table, on the dining room table. But how do you have sex on a table? Like, I, I don't know. He sex? had this thing where they would uh, have sex, and then the table would collapse, and I guess that's when Kim got his rocks off. You know, I would just come home and go, hi, Kim. Like a breakaway and, table? Like, uh-huh. like Chris Farley and the motivational speaker falling through a breakaway wall? Yes, yes. That was like a joke to Kim Fowler, have sex and the he table would have a breakaway table. And Did the people finish? <laughs> I have no clue. I would run to my bedroom and close the door. Really? Yeah. Even if the table broke, you wouldn't think like, wow, I really am the best at this. I just broke Kim Fowler's table. No, I was never on the table with Kim. I don't think I ever ate off that table. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Maddie Boy, by the way, you just explained Maddie Boy's deepest, darkest fantasies to Make love on breakaway furniture at the real Hey Maddie or uh, at Jmore thirty seven is me. Are you on Twitter? Yes. At Lita Ford. Yes. No underscores or anything like that. Yes. No. Just straight up L I T A F O R D. Yes, it is at Lita Ford. So when you guys listen to this, make sure you hashtag more stories. Let Lita Ford know uh, that you dug her. And Mitch, are you on the tweet? I am not on the tweet. You don't need to be on the tweet. You're a rambling man, Mitch. I'm looking deep into your eyes, and you're like. A combination. I tweet for him. You tweet for him. Yeah, he's like Joe Walsh and Dickie Betts if they made if they uh, gave birth to Chris Robinson. Uh huh. That's cool. How's that? Well, I I'll, I like that better than what he said about Marty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything about Marty O'Brien. I just it, you know what? No matter what name you said, I, I would have said that just, just for the joke. <laughs> just for the joke. So at Lita Ford, and uh, don't forget, yeah. uh, January 11th, M15 in Corona. January 10th, working backwards, Hard Rock in Vegas at Vinyl, and January 9th, Whiskey at Go Go. And these these will be full. So get tickets uh, and get them early. Uh, Dollar Shave Club sponsors this fine podcast. Mitch, how often do you shave? You don't look like you're a hair suit man. You seem like 
that Jagger esque yeah, body you I, have. I actually just got rid of the beard this morning. You had a beard? No, <laughs> you're lying to me, Mitch. I, you're actually, too I had it. the beard. You had the beard? I did. Yeah. A lot of people think my wife has my beard. DollarShaveClub.com. Uh, these guys are the best. They deliver amazing quality razor blades that uh, other bathroom goodness that you could use right to your door for just a couple bucks a month. No more shelling out 20 bucks for blades. You don't have to unlock the razors. You ever go to the pharmacy or something? And you're like, could you unlock the uh, yes. razors for me? Like the yeah. homeless. It's unbelievable. Like, could you spare some change? I Get just me some pry razors. open the plastic and stick my fingers in there and pull out a box. You would do that. I, yeah. That's um, a runaway. That's the, be- that's the behavior of a, a like, teenage girl staying out all night that doesn't wear a bra at school. Come and buy, come and unlock this thing. And it just is like, fuck well, this. Women it's can a razor. Also, it's a packet of razors. Women can also use Dollar Shave Club razors, uh, Lita Ford. Uh, no more shelling out 20 bucks for blades. No more painful <laughs> shaves with worn out razors. Everybody's getting their dollarshaveclub.com razors. Hand to God. Won't promote anything I don't believe in. I can step out of the shower and just with my face wet, I can shave without shaving cream. They're that yeah, good. Yeah, me too. They're the best one. Yeah? Yeah. You're, that's why you have that clean, close shave? It is. It is. I'm rubbing my face, ladies and gentlemen. It is. I'm rubbing Dollar my legs. Dollar Shave Club <laughs> uh, heard about the amazing uh, mustache that I'm growing for Movember to raise money to fight cancer. So they've reached out to sponsor me. For every one of you guys right now that sign up at dollarshaveclub.com and use the promo code J J A Y, they're going to donate $10 to my Movember team. Ten bucks to help fight cancer. That's cool as hell, you guys. DollarShaveClub.com. Shave time, shave money. DollarShaveClub.com. I know Mitch is going to get them pronto. It's a good sponsor. Shave time, shave money. I dig it a lot. Shave time. That's what the copy says right there. Shave time. Instead Hmm. of save time, it's like a little pun. They make it funny and cute. Shave time, shave money. Kind of like these guys. Shave time with your chihuahuas. I've never had a podcast with this many dogs. What razor? What are your dogs' names? This is, well, she's a Miami dog. We've got her in Miami. So her name is Gloria Estefan? Uh, is it Gloria? Gloria Estefan. Estefan. I, uh, I got her, she's a little Mexican dog, so I gave her a little Mexican name. Well, she's from Miami, she the, should be Cuban, The Mexican no? pastry. But in Mexico, they call her, uh, Mexi- in Miami, they call her chu- Churito. You know the little Chudos? Lita, what's your dog's name? Chudo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in Miami, they call her Churito. Chudo. Then, your dog's name is Chudo. 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 Do you ever like, blow a pot smoke in her choosy. face? Choosy. She's choosy. Oh, choosy. She's choosy. Have you ever blown pot smoke in your dog's I face? I don't need to blow it in and watch, face. The and house watch, is full of it. And watch their butts go up in the air? <laughs> Mitch has done it. You just grab like a schnauzer by the nose? No. Just watch his ass go up in the air? No. Never? Why would his ass go up in the air? Just because it's a funny thing to say. Oh. No real reason. I'm a comic, Lena. I don't know if they I told know. you that. I'm yes, playing. they did. I read the memo. This is, this is not literal. <laughs> Uh, which one of your two dogs are most likely to get into your pot and have a day of it? Uh, mm, this rascal. That's why she's named Rascal, because she's a little shit. She's into everything. Really? Yeah. Have they ever gotten into your pot? Mm, mm, I don't know. Well, you would know, because they would lick themselves until they bled. Oh, That's, really? Yeah. Ralphie May, comedian. Well, then they may have, because yeah. uh, <laughs> they may have. We got these little toys around the house. <laughs> You know, the little bobos, they're long Oh, I thought you meant like Kim Fowler style. And they I'm straddle them, and they're like... <laughs> oh, they get pumped up. And they're up. all over the house. They get fired up. They go from room to room and just have sex all day long, these dogs. These two chihuahuas? Yeah. They I bring them on it. the tour bus. They're, they're everywhere, these damn things. Well, they need to get their fix when they're on the road. I like that you're bringing your dogs on the road with you. They I get like exercise. You know, it's good for them. Mitch, are you healthy. having sex on the tour bus with toys? These dogs got way more action on the tour bus than any of the band. That's true. Why don't you just use one of the dog toys, Mitch, and hit that prostate? <laughs> and just... You didn't see the dog toys after they were done with them. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch yeah. destroying the dog toys. Uh, Ralphie May, comedian friend of mine, his dog, he had a boxer named Pimp, whose dog collar said, bitch better have my money. The dog's name was Pimp. And then he had another little dog named Hoochie Mama. And Pimp one day got into an eighth of grass and hit all of it. And he oh. came home from a gig and the dog was licking his balls and they actually, like he bled out. He didn't die. He was fine. But the dog couldn't stop licking his balls high and until they got Why? like biggest – because he was – what would, what would, what would you, what would you, you do if you're high? Uh, eat probably. Eat what? <laughs> I mean, you know. Balls? If you, if you, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Lita <laughs> Ford, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. At Lita Ford. Hashtag eat balls. <laughs> they will hashtag the shit out of you, too. Uh, these people cool. that this podcast. Cool. Yeah, baby. Eat balls. How – I remember when – um. You were 
really successful when I was in high school and we were both much younger, uh, Kiss Me Deadly. And your poster was on every wall in every uh, bedroom. Like yeah. every guy that listened to metal, that like yeah. you, were, you were like the broad that made the cut. I get it all the time. You transcended, yeah. You trans. It wasn't a girl playing guitar. Like you fucking tread on guitar. Now, what age did you pick up a guitar and realize I'm really good at this? Or did you take guitar lessons, piano lessons? Like, how did it start? No, I started when I was 11, and uh, I took lessons for two weeks. And I went, "Fuck this! These, this guy's not teaching me anything exciting. I don't want to take lessons anymore." So I went home and taught myself. I put on my favorite Black Sabbath records, my favorite Jimi Hendrix records, and they were records. They were turntables, probably as long as this table, where the turntable, the controls were over here, and the turntable was over here. Yeah. And I would go and I would push the needle back in the grooves and play the same part over and over again. So I like, two grooves, and I think I'll get it right back to the beginning of the solo. And I would work out the solo parts and the riffs and... I taught myself. So how, th- your mom wants you to play Black Sabbath. You learn to play listening to Black Sabbath. Then you wind up marrying Tommy Iommi from Black Sabbath. Isn't that that's weird? like I, it, that, is that is that's got to be the nuttiest thing in the world. Do you tell Tommy weird. when you meet him like, "Oh my god, when I was a little girl I used to listen to your albums just to make him feel old?" No, he was my hero. Oh. He was my guitar hero. And you, you know? married your guitar hero. Well, I was engaged. I never oh, married I him. Oh, I apologize. You were engaged to your guitar hero. Yes. And uh, and then I had a top ten hit single with Ozzy, yeah, who was uh, the lead singer of Black Sabbath. So it was kind of weird because they were the first band I ever saw play live. Really? Yeah. Where'd you see him? Long Beach Arena, when I was thirteen. A lot of shit going down in Long Beach in this episode. I dig it, Matty Boy. Was I was up? I was actually engaged to my guitar hero too. It was just because I had like four eights of grass that day. Just couldn't stop playing. Oh, you were married to the game. Guitar the game hero? guitar hero, yeah, kind of like similar. That. Yeah. Married to the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these yeah. are jokes, Lita. How do you yeah. marry a game? No, it's no, a don't, joke. Don't worry, it's just about gags. It. How do you have sex with a game? Oh, oh Lita, oh, Lita, <laughs> Lita. I don't know. Ask him. You haven't Why seen my keyboard. Hold on. Like... <laughs> Why do you think they call it a joystick? <laughs> oh no, you hold on. You've earned that mic, Mitch. <laughs> You've earned that mic. When you're on the road at 16 years old, is there like a lot of sex on the road? I mean, there's no shortage of guys oh, in the yeah. audience. Because I'm watching you guys on YouTube, and I'm like, these chicks are smoking hot. This is crazy. Yeah, there was a lot of sex. Yeah, there was, especially um, towards the end of the Runaways and then uh, in the early Lita days. Yeah, we got the creme de la creme. Really? But you know what was cool is because a lot of the girls in the Runaways were gay, so that left more guys for me. Did you ever tell uh, guys that they had to blow the roadie to get to you? Like, you know that old trick, like, you got to oh. sleep at the roadies if you want to get to the real guys? Mm-mm. And then there's a girl backstage, like, Lita Ford's backstage, but, like, sorry, you got to talk to Big Mike. <laughs> you got to have sex with my roadie before you get to me. Well, I didn't do the fans. I didn't do any of the fans. Oh, you met rock stars like Kim Fowler told you you would. Yes, and I you, did. And you hooked up with the creme de la creme. Yes, I did. Uh, John or Paul? Which one? Which Beatle? Um, no Beatles, I don't think. No, no Beatles. I, I had to think back. Best. No. So no shortage, and it was it was going on a lot in the runaway. I'm trying to go yeah. about this delicately because you guys were minors, and I want people to think I was a creep. Yeah. No, there was a few guys that wouldn't have sex with me because I was a minor. I would have been one of those guys. And then I went back to them after I got uh, of age and said, hey, I'm of age now, and they look like hell, and I didn't want anything to do with them. <laughs> no. Who's the big one? Who's the big rock star that you wanted to have sex with that got away? Uh, um, or who are you pining for now? I don't think any of them got away. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. That's the best. <laughs> so you just set your target, as yeah, Mitch said. this is that, Hollywood, man. The yellow center of the target, and you, you hit your target. Yeah. It's, what's, that's yeah. the best. And I guess if you're Lita Ford, you don't really need a rap. You're like, hi, I don't, hi I'm, a, I'm a beautiful blonde woman. I'm a, I don't wear a bra. And I have a backstage pass. <laughs> I have a backstage pass, and I don't know if you've heard me play guitar, but I'm pretty fucking sweet. Lay down. Ah, <laughs> drop your pants. Drop your pants, <laughs> or vice versa. Mitch, now, are you getting any spillage? <laughs> Not from her. <laughs> <laughs> Lita spit out her water. I almost spit my water. <laughs> <clears throat> You're like, Jesus, I can't have sex with a kid from Maroon 5 again. Mitch, fuck this guy already. I'm so no, tired of him. No, I don't fuck him. my band. 
No, no not your band. I don't fuck my band. Other bands. Oh, by it, the way, I quit. Ah, oh, Mitch okay. Mitch is on fire. Mitch is hot ah. tonight. Mitch, you got to get on Twitter. We something. fuck each other on stage on guitars every night when we yeah, play. That's how you put it. Mitch calls it blue balls. Oh. <laughs> You're like, no, it's like we're making love every night, Mitch. And he's back at the Holiday Inn Express punching his clown going, sure it is. <laughs> God gave him two great hands, you know. Two great hands. I can't make up my mind. I up my mind. <laughs> um, what, uh, when you were in the, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to the runaways. Only be, I, it's socially, I know we're going to hit Lita Ford a lot because, it, I mean, you're up and running. You're a headliner in your own right. And that's why you're playing these places. January 9th, Whiskey A Go Go. You know what? That's going to sell out. You don't need me for that. Yeah. January 10th, Hard Rock in Vegas. Vegas is a weird town, but yeah. the Moriers, that's what they've called themselves. Uh, they will unite and come see Lita Ford. And uh, January 11th, M15, uh, M15 in Corona, California. And uh, you got a ton of dates and you're doing like meet and greet. Do you do meet and greets after the show? What, if what, I feel what, like it, yeah. What, well, how does a fan know night of? Whether I'll tell you... them while I'm on stage. Really? Yeah, I'll say, hey, we're going to play one more song for you. And uh, after the show, I'll be signing autographs over there at that booth. So come on over. Say hi to me. And how many times does that happen usually? I do it a lot. Really? Yeah. And even if it's like a 1,200-seat theater, you don't care? Uh, n- no, I don't do it. If it's a little club, I will. Yeah. But if it's a, a large arena, I don't do it. No. I was in San Antonio last Saturday at the Empire Theater, and I'm like, people are tweeting me like, do you do meet and greets at your shows? I'm like, hey, man, all my shows are meet and greets. And the meet and greet was actually as long as the show. Yeah. They, they, oh, all, yeah. Just, they all just hang out. Yeah. yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is a long I gotta line." I tell for- you, she she is the most gracious person I've ever seen. When she does, when she starts a meet and greet, she doesn't quit until the last person. No, she doesn't quit until she sees a yeah. guy she likes. Yeah, or that. Your business depends on software, all your apps, your databases, your social media, everything. So the last thing you need is a problem with it. New Relic Software Analytics gives you powerful real time insights into your software. So you can spot problems and fix them before they become big problems. Check it out free. It's free, you guys, for 30 days. Go to newrelic.com slash radio. N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C dot com slash radio. Newrelic.com slash radio. Now more with Lita Ford. <laughs> you've never you've never fooled around with fans? That's that's one like time. <laughs> one time. One time I did. Go on. One time I was signing autographs and there was this guy that came up in a little pair of shorts. And he was, I guess he was working construction or something, but he took time off from construction to come and get a, an autograph. And I was signing and I saw these shorts and I looked up and saw a belly button. And then I started looking up and saw this amazing looking body. And I went, what's your name? Can I have her phone number? So I got his number and I got his name and I went home and I called him a couple of days later and I flew him in from, uh, Sacramento, San Francisco. It was Northern California. Are you sure he wasn't a gay guy? If he's wearing tight shorts and he's dressed as a construction worker? <laughs> no, he wasn't a gay guy. <laughs> You're like, not So I that flew night. him in and we had fun. And then you fly him right out. And then I fly him right out. I don't remember of, his name. With that Lita Ford money. Yeah. I don't remember his name, though. He was just hot and we just screwed around for a couple of days. That's great. Boy toy. Boy, that's... But I don't usually do that. You know, that was a kind of a weird one-off thing. Yeah. So if you go see Lita Ford January 11th at M15 in Corona, California, don't be up there. And sh- you know what? How about this? Every listener of this podcast, <laughs> wear little short shorts <laughs> and Lita will know that I sent you. Little short shorts and belly button better be showing. You can, yeah, wear, yeah. You can wear your Maury or More Stories podcast yeah. t-shirt. And a mustache. And a fake mustache. Yeah. Yep. I, oh, that's hysterical. We have uh, <laughs> On your lip, mustache uh, you, should go. Yeah, mustache. <laughs> are you are you a fan of the facial hair on your men or no? I don't mind. You don't mind at all? Yeah. I had a mustache for a movie once and my wife said uh, after a while, she goes, now I know why mustache rides are free. I said, why? She goes, oh my God, they have to be. That was the worst Something about having a prickly oh. face didn't suit her. Uh, oh, I kind of like it. I, I think it looks good, that five o'clock shadow. I like it. I'm not I think saying it's it sexy. It look good. I'm just saying after a while, it might get a, might get a bit it's of a scratchy. Razor yeah, burn. A little, yeah, a little razor burn, a little scratchy. And we're talking about, uh, of course, facial hair. Facial hair, yeah. Well, you know, it's scratchy either way you look at it, you know. If you trim the little pubes too, too close and they start to grow back, they get a little stubble. 
Do you find it weird it when a guy underwear. shaves? Yeah, it does stick. Do you ever find it strange when a guy shaves all of his pubes? Do you laugh him out of the room? I don't or? like that. Because I did it once and it looked like a rubber chicken. It's it weird. Disgusting. Yeah, I, I don't like that. That that doesn't turn me on. But you also want like a guy that came out of the Pacific Northwest with like dreadlocks and braids down there and gum wrappers. You, you, Ew. you want a guy to trim around the edges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, clean. You know, you want somebody clean. who's clean. Kind of course of, you do. At least halfway. <laughs> Lita I don't Ford. mind a little sweat. Go to Lita... Wow. You know what? That's that's the name of your next album. I don't mind a little sweat. <laughs> that's great. I don't. Uh, Slippery when wet can kiss my ass. That's way hot. <laughs> uh, Lita Ford, I don't mind a little sweat. Yeah. That's a great yeah. one. Uh, LitaFordOnline.com. You can get all things Lita Ford. You have an exceptional website. I always go on the guest websites. Thanks. And some of them are not so good. Uh, mine is pretty good. Yours is like other level because you got the Lita Ford gear, you got your own guitars, you got everything, and so and your fans can buy all your stuff and yeah. all your info and stuff like that. So go to LitaFordOnline.com. However, you also have to go to JMore.com, click the Amazon banner. I've been told clear your cookies. I still don't know what that means. Clear your cookies on your computer. Maybe clear your history, or I don't know what it means. Do you know, know what it means, Matty Boy? Mitch, hand the mic what does to it Matty mean, Boy. Maddie? I believe it means that each website that you uh, that you go to, it saves a certain amount of your information so that when you revisit that website that they kind of remember what it is you were tracking, what were you looking for, what purchases you made, such things as that. So if I don't clear my cookies, Correct. go to jmore.com and hit the Amazon banner, what would happen? It, it might bring up Amazon directly. It might not include the jmore link. Oh, that's of high relevance. I believe so. All right. But well, I could be completely wrong and super stoned. So. <laughs> Are you stoned? No, well, not at all. Oh, those those were the days, Lita. I was those gonna say you did days. it without me. No, those How were the days. How could you have, Lita Ford? You, another great album title for Lita Ford. You did it without me. You did it without me. You did uh, it all by yourself. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, and you can buy all things Lita Ford. You can buy all of her albums. Which album do you make the most money off of if people buy it? Well, right now we have the new live album, which is kicking ass. Living, um, sorry, the bitch is back. The bitch is back. Yeah, two thousand twelve. That live. came out. Came out just a few days ago, last week. What came out in 2012? Am I thinking of Living Like a Runaway? Living Like a Run. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one's doing really well too. That's doing well. Yeah. But were you you weren't so happy with the way that went out? That wasn't a Lita Ford album per se. It was no, too... that's another album. That was Wicked Wonderland. Yeah, a little too collaborative. <laughs> yeah, that album. Just... So the bit uh, Living Like a Runaway. That's a Lita Ford album. It is. So anybody wants to know the full wrath. Of Lita Ford oh, yeah. shredding on the guitar and screaming her eyes out. It's living like a runaway, and now the bitch is back. As there are two badass albums. So go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, and buy all things Lita Ford if you wish. And uh, people, a lot of podcasts, Lita, they have an Amazon banner, and people will tweet me and go, why should I use yours instead of this guy's or that guy's? So if you're wondering why you should use the Amazon banner on my uh, podcast, jmore.com, it's because I'm actually, this. I would not lie to you, I use all the Amazon money. It goes direct deposit to both of my son's college funds. So some of these guys are buying like, uh, you know, Vietnamese fuck swings and yeah. getting, getting their thing I going. I had one. Um, you ha Come on. I did. You did not have one. I did. Who were you with when that was get up and running? My ex. To remain nameless. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, is it something <laughs> that actually when you're in it, you go, wow, this is way better than just fucking on a bed. Uh, no, it was actually kind of a pain in the butt. Seems like a lot of work. Like, I can't work a hammock. I have a hard time Not with Not literally, hammock. but... Yeah, no, unless... I have a hard time with a hammock. Like, if I'm on vacation, I wind up, like, flipping over, so I can't imagine <laughs> having to strap myself in, <laughs> legs akimbo, and having somebody untie me from my Vietnamese uh, sex chair. But you, you gave it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you're just talking about all this. Yeah, you are a, go. You are a rock star. You don't give a shit. This is like what every guy... No, I don't give a shit. No, you don't give a shit. No, I got lots of good stories. How do you throw away a Vietnamese fuck swing? Um, the lawyers did, made made us get rid of it. Yeah, but how? Like, the lawyers say, clean the bedroom up. M M M get rid of those <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you can't just put it in like a, a, your trash can and let the trash I don't man. know. I don't know where it went. Uh, I, I, I've actually got a kind of a curiously funny story about yard the sale? fuck swing. <laughs> um, I had a yard sale. All right, I'll give you the fuck swing and the inclined bench for $400. <laughs> my lowest. Okay, the dildos. Who's taking the dildos? Well, can I just have some of them or do I have to buy them all as a set? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Just give me the white ones. It depends on, yeah, right. <laughs> 
no. Oh, uh, I don't think we had any white, <laughs> black ones. I think we had pink, red, blue, glass. Glass ones are cold. You got to heat them up first. With your crack pipe torch. Yeah. <laughs> no. Real rock and roll. <whistles> What's that dog's name? Oh, Cholo. That's Choosy. Ch- choosy? Choosy. Choosy! Get your ass over here. Well, yeah, Sarah will grab the dog. Sarah, you brought Sorry, a crew Sorry, I'm yelling into, into the microphone no, here. No, we don't. Okay, my ears are fine. <laughs> That's so Judy. How do you throw, boy, do you throw one away? Uh, well, first of all, I suggest that you uh, install it properly. Because that's, uh, that's not fun when it falls off the, the door frame. You talk about breakaway table. What if the oh. Vietnamese fuck swing falls out of the ceiling? Did you, Mitch, tell him about the batteries on the rider for the, the batteries on the rider that, that I said was for the vibrators. I remember that. Why aren't you but telling me? I don't me? remember that. You do, we, were, we were just starting the, a tour, and uh, we had 9-volt batteries on the rider. And uh, we went backstage, and and uh, Mitch says, "Oh, there's nine volt batteries." And I said, "Yeah, they're those are for my vibrator." <laughs> and Mitch says, "Vibrators don't take nine volt batteries." Mitch knows. And I said, "How the hell do you know?" <laughs> <coughs> he so, works at a D cell battery plant. He knew. <laughs> do you put that? What's the now. weirdest thing in your contract rider? Um, pepperoni sticks for the dogs. That's not that weird. What? If you have dogs, that's that's pretty. Well, people down get the it messed up. They think it's pepperoni, so they'll give us pepperoni, and then we get into the dressing room, and there's like little pieces of pepperoni, <laughs> and I'm thinking, why is there pepperoni in here? Everything we, in your rider is shaped like a eats dildo. Pepperoni. So our, our guitar tech Nothing. once had these little sticks, and we weren't sure <laughs> if they were for people or for dogs. And he he was eating them one day, and all of a sudden he looked at halfway through, and he looked at me, and he said, "These are for people, aren't they?" And I said, shit, I don't know. Did you read the label? Because <laughs> we were getting all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. I, I put chocolate and strawberry douche on my rider once. Did they deliver? Well, their chocolate and strawberry douche doesn't exist. Well, I mean, but they might create it in a lab someplace. Well, I would get vinegar and oil or some, or what do they call it? Vinegar and water, not vinegar and oil. That's vinegar for salad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, they would give you me must be great at vinegar. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's ranch. <laughs> Nobody wants to see ranch. No, no. No, that's bad news up there. No, but I just did it as a joke because they don't make chocolate and strawberry did they douche. Make the attempt, and did you get the call? Yes, the, they would. Okay, they would make the know. attempt, and you know? you get the call. You, you'd get like smell of spring flowers or some shit. And do they go like, sorry, we couldn't find strawberry and, and like, chocolate Where's douche. the chocolate and strawberry douche? <laughs> then we, we would just... We do have a nice smelling dressing room. <laughs> We yeah, do. We it do. smells like the salad bar at Olive Garden. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. We have candles and and flowers. Candles and flowers. That's all. How many? Do you have a big contract rider? Uh, it's pretty big. Yeah. I got three things. The four things. Pot of coffee. It's got to be. Oh, very, absolutely. It's got to be strong. Yeah. Coffee. Mud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, orange Gatorade. Room temperature. A humidifier. That's naturally, if you're a singer, you got to get the humidifier, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, white socks. I need white socks. I read it off of Foo Fighters contract you're writer. You're kidding me. But here's the thing. When you walk out, Mitch is like, what? You'll dig this. When you walk out on stage, anytime you put on bre- – like they've <clears> never <throat> been out of the package before. And then you put on the white socks. And right when you walk on stage, all of a sudden there's a little spring in the step. It's brand new. Brand new pair of socks, boing, boing, like all spongy and fun. You got to try it. It's great. Wow, that's weird. I think you should go. I think you should go. That's not that weird. That's weird. You have chocolate and strawberry douche and my oh, socks yeah, are weird. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's clothing. That's like something you pack yourself. Yeah, but I've never bought socks in the last 18 years. Oh. I just keep coming home from the road with socks. I put vitamins on there because vitamins are expensive. They are expensive. I'll put a bottle of Maltese and a bottle of C's. So that way, if if we just take the Maltese and take the C's at the gig and then we leave them there and we don't take them anymore, I know that there'll be more at the next gig. Yeah. So we get our vitamins. That's smart. (laughs) And you can buy vitamins at the Amazon link at jmore.com. This guy says, JJ, my first of many Amazon purchases through your website. I would have started earlier, but I had to make uh, Allison Rosen independently wealthy. She has a podcast on the Adam Carolla Network. She's a wonderful girl. Uh, first, by ordering through her website. All right. Cut to what you got me. I love finally hearing Stuart Copeland do a long-form interview with you. Keep up the good work, and I hope you and Adam keep up the cross-pollination. That's not a euphemism for gay sex. Doc Mike. Uh, Adam Carolla and I are 
very good yeah. friends and brothers in podcasting. We do each other's podcast once a month. Doc cool. Mike bought a wetsuit. Look at this, Mitch. You'll dig that. Oh, Orca, men's predator, full stage. sleeve wetsuit, uh, black. It's a size eight. Yeah, right, Mike. Uh, look at that, seven hundred bucks. Wow. He's helping out a lot with tax, seven hundred and fifty nine dollars. Why is your tax on a wetsuit? Can a man buy a wetsuit no. without the government? Not in the California. Government, the government going in your gocket. That's from Doc Mike Totola. Much love to you, Mike. You, uh, want, uh, you want to hear another one real quick? These are fun. Hopefully, they're going to buy Lita Ford stuff. Maybe they can buy pepperoni sticks <laughs> or pepperoni sticks. Pepperoni. Forgive me, Lita Ford. We have, uh, we have all kinds of goodies for sale in our store. We have in little the necklaces. Lita Ford Yeah, yeah. We have little necklaces, and uh, we're gonna we, we're gonna start belts. Are you hearing the grunting? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I dig it. No, it's that's, fine. Um, that's, that's my, the that's dog. Mitch's yeah. stomach. All this talk about pepperoni sticks is getting him started. <laughs> Chocolate, strawberry, douche, and pepperoni. Mm, He's like, girl. Mm, 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 mm. uh, what's up, Jay Moores? That's what people call me because that's what Tracy Morgan calls me. Jay Moores. I love Jay Moores. Uh, what's up, Jay Moores? I got this wine refrigerator from Amazon using the Jay Moore link. I'm going to drink my wine and listen to the Jay Moore podcast. Everybody has gay things. Sounds gay. Drink my wine. No, that doesn't sound gay at all. It just sounds like a guy drinking wine. He's being a little hypersensitive, right? Uh, yeah, either way, yeah. I'm not Sarah Brady big, but keep spending. You rock, uh, Brad. That's from Bradley J. Betts. Thank you, Brad. The Sarah Brady reference was a gal that bought like uh, 6,000 more. It was, like, it was upwards of 10 Gs of televisions <laughs> using the Amazon banner. So she's the high watermark for everybody to aspire to. That's nuts. It is nuts, but it's great. But now I want people to buy your things using my link. But you know what? I want them to buy them off your <laughs> website. But if they're going to buy things on Amazon, Lita Ford anyway. Tell me about your designing belts, Lita Ford belts. Yes. Are yes. these for dogs or people? No, they're for people. They're for what people. What about belts? You've never seen a dog in a belt. Do you, what, do you have a belt on? I don't I got I, a belt. Did I wear No, I didn't wear one either. <laughs> it's not the belt. How come dogs never wear belts? Gets in the way of the nipples? Because they or? have collars. They they're, have collars. They're Is a collar really the dog's belt? Yeah. It's hard to get it's a belt It's a neck a belt. <laughs> It's a, it's a neck belt. Belts. It is. Uh, your necklaces on LitaFordOnline.com? They're necklaces you and then there's belts. You design them yourself? Yeah. And what, what inspires you to say, I need to sell necklaces? Um, it just You just find something that's cool yeah. and uh, find something that you think the fans would like. Um, the necklaces are great for women, but you can also use them as a, as a keychain. You know how guys wear yeah. the chains that hang down on their belts? In their short shorts? They go from their belt to their wallets. No, not in their short shorts. That was a great story, Lita. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you had sex with one of the members of the village people that night. Uh, you know, he could have been. Yeah. He could have been. Could've I don't know been. who the hell he was. Uh, when you do these gigs, what cities uh, have you been to that completely surprised you with how absolutely in love they were with Lita Ford? Oh, boy. Or is well, that just all of them? Phoenix was pretty... I like Pretty Phoenix, good. too. Yeah. How, how about Corpus Christi last year? Corpus oh, Christi. Nah, that's my stomach grounds. Yeah. Is I, it? Well, my uh, grandmother was Miss Cisco. Oh, really? my mother was raised in Odessa. But Corpus Christi used to have a college. One of the few places where college went out of business, the Corpus Christi Tarpons. Now it's a defunct university. But in Corpus Christi, they get their medal on in Texas. There are some hardcore fans in Corpus Christi. My God. Really hardcore fans. And then the other night, we just played Hermosa Beach in this little club. And there are some really diehard Lita fans in, in uh, the Hermosa Beach area. But I don't know where they came from. I don't think they lived there. I think they drove in from different from areas. Brea. They drove in from like other parts of Orange County. Alaska. Lawndale. Drove in from Florida. Yeah, Long, Long, Lawndale? Lawndale. Well played, Mitch. <laughs> well played. So uh, you're on tour and you're not slowing down. You got the Christmas uh, single, yeah. Rock This Christmas Down. Yeah, yeah. And you made that with Mitch? Yes. And who else is on that? Cherie Curry from The Runaways is singing it with me. It's a duet. So why don't you and Cherie just go out as The Runaways and just have Joan Jett sit on the side and watch you guys make yeah. love to a pile of money? We just might do that. So she is the holdout. We, she is the holdup. And, and I'm being honest. I what love is, Joan. It, I love about, her. And we is, want her with us. Why doesn't she want to do it? Has she ever said to you, this is why I don't want to do it? Her management doesn't want her to do it. Why? Um, you'd have to ask them that. Well, give me your phone. I'll call them. 
DollarShaveClub.com. These guys are the best. They deliver quality razors right to your door. They deliver them. You never have to buy razors again. I stand by this product. I put my name on it. These are the best razors I've ever used in my life. When I met this guy and he told me he was going to have a Dollar Shave Club and he was going to do razors, I thought he had rocks in his head. And then I used them. Oh my gosh, I'm not kidding. They're great. No more shelling out 20 bucks for blades. No more getting them unlocked from razor jail at the pharmacy. Everybody here is getting their Dollar Shave Club blades. You should too. Get this. Dollar Shave Club heard about the amazing mustache me and all my friends are growing for Movember to raise money to fight cancer. So they reached out to sponsor me and the More Stories podcast. For every one of you right now that signs up at dollarshaveclub.com and you enter the promo code J, J A Y, they're going to donate $10 to my Movember team to raise awareness for men's health. Think about that. Prostate cancer, testicular cancer, all that stuff that affects everyone we know, they're going to kick it out. DollarShaveClub.com. Shave time. Shave money. DollarShaveClub.com. Go there. Enter the promo code J, and you can make a difference. Thanks, guys. Why don't you call her manager, and I'll do a care. I'll call us Christopher Walken. And Joe, oh, that's I'll a do an, email. Call, Do you have her manager's phone number? I don't. I don't. My manager has her manager's phone number. If you get it to me, I will call him as Christopher Walken. Oh, wow. And say, look, you have to get the Runaways back together. It's a band that needs to reunite. Oh, I love Christopher Walken. Yeah, well, I got news for you. I saw your website. I like your necklaces. Oh, God. You said just love like him. him. Women oh, loved God. Christopher Walken. We did a movie with him, and every woman that was on the set was like, oh, my God. I didn't know he was that hot. He's hot. He I've always hot, thought right? he was hot. Yeah. yeah. He's good good. He's yeah. a good dude in real life. Uh LitaFordonline.com. Go see your January 9th whiskey at GoGo January 10th, Hard Rock in Vegas, January eleventh, M fifteen in Corona, California. But make sure you tweet her at Lita Ford and let her know you heard her here on uh, more stories. We'll get the photo up of Lita Ford wearing her fake mustache, repping <laughs> fake mustache studios. You can go to fake mustache studios.com. And uh, Sarah Kazi, anything you want to uh, promote? Any uh, money <laughs> manager? Sarah. Any uh, hedge funds? Should we get in on that? I can't, tw- I can't be doing that. I can't be doing that. No. It's the, the, She's the here to support here. me. All right. You don't need support. You're a front. You know, they say, like, who's the, one of the best front men of all time? Who's your favorite front man of all time? Mick Jagger. Yeah? Yeah. I was listening to, you know, it wasn't until I heard the Crows covering the Rolling Stones. And somehow Luther Dickinson from North, is it North Mississippi All-Stars or North Alabama All-Stars? North Alabama. Hold that up tight, buddy. North Alabama. So Luther Dickinson and North Alabama All-Stars. I thought Mick Taylor riffs were just like, Mick Taylor, that's it. And when they do Can't You Hear Me Knocking, like Luther Dickinson just, and it's nothing to it. And then Chris Robinson comes in and you go, oh, where's Mick? Uh, yeah, there's nobody like Mick. I'll go Freddie Mercury. I won't up you. Yeah. For a guy yeah. to be that gay, yeah, Freddie's awesome. Name the awesome. band Queen yeah. and have a bunch of mullets that want to like have sex with the Runaways, going yeah, rock and roll. But Mick, that's your favorite frontman of yeah, all time. Yeah, I love Mick. Have you met him? No, no, I've never met Mick. How old is Mick now? Hundred and one, hundred and two? No, I think he's like seventy something. Do you still have to have sex with Mick Jagger just for the story? I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have his number? <laughs> I don't. I'll call him as another character. I don't. I'll do, I'll do Pacino. I'll do some other wacky character for Let's you. Let's see. Whose number do I have? Um, Mick, but Mick Jagger, who, out of the rock gods that you have not uh, bedded, who is, is Mick number one on the list? Yeah. What about Bowie? Yeah. Bowie, Steven Tyler. I like big lips. Really? Yeah. You'd love my son. I'll show you a photo of my baby boy. He's got his mommy's big lips. Well, I can't do your son. No, I don't want you to have sex with my son. I'm just saying you'll think. You know what? That did sound awful when I said it. You'd love my son. Huh? Maddie Boy's my son. But you don't have big, juicy, thick lips like young. My but son. he's very, very cute. He's like a Johnny Depp. If uh, Very cute. Johnny Depp never wore a scarf. That's, so Mick Jagger, that's the guy. Is that is yeah. that the one? If you had to write down yeah. one name and seal it. Yeah. Yeah, Mick. And you got to do it just for the story. Yeah. Yeah. You, Can you set me up? Uh, I wish I could. I don't know any stones. I don't either. I met Keith and I met Woody. No, that was that. years Keith's and years and years ago in London. They were in rehearsal. But uh, now I met Steve and I know Stephen. Stephen but tweeted me. I told Mick you off is... mic. He tweeted me to do the podcast. He's uh... Okay, so you got to get us both on here. All right. Oh, my God. Love is in the air. 
Lita Ford, <laughs> you are uh, the real deal, and I, I, I like it. And you can uh, slam shots and drink beer and smoke reefer and play guitar <laughs> with yes. any motherfucking men out there. And you know it, don't you? Yeah. I love it. And yeah. I think that's part of why people dig, and we'll, you'll always have an audience, is because you don't put on any airs. You're no. like, oh, wow, I'm so lucky you guys are here. You're like, fuck that, I rock. Pull the door. <laughs> fuck that, I rock. See me at M15 in Corona, says Lita Ford. I will be at the Brea Improv, uh, <laughs> not as glamorous as playing guitar in a rock band, but I'll be doing stand-up comedy. Brea Improv, uh, come see me at the Brea Improv, November 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And if you're asking, is there or not you get a bonus? Yes, the 24th, come Sunday, and I'll get paid in oh, full. I'll be there for the bonus. You want to come? I'd love to. Are you in town? I'm in town the 23rd. Well, that's a Saturday. That's easy. I'll set you guys up. Awesome. Mitch, you going? I'm going. We're Mitch. going. Look at me. I like a man that conditions his hair, Mitch. You're all right. <laughs> Mitch he is cool to. as that. He's got the Zoso t-shirt on. He's ready to roll. I love it. Where are you from, Mitch? Yeah, long story. Born in New York, grew up in London, lived out here a long time now. And what did I say? You were like, if Joe Walsh and Dickie Betts had a child and it was Chris Robinson. Yeah, I, I, you did say <laughs> that. I think that's pretty accurate. I'm going to have to take the three pictures, put them together, and see if I agree with that. <laughs> it's you. But Joe Walsh is definitely in your uh, oh, I in your love timeline. Joe Walsh. I love him. He's, He's a good so dude. great. And let's be honest. Joe Walsh, the Eagles weren't shit until Joe mm. Walsh joined the Eagles. Yeah. They did this Eagles documentary about, we just wanted to make rock. Glenn Fry's like, we just wanted to make uh, rock and roll. I'm like, you didn't make fucking rock and roll. You made Hotel California when Joe Walsh came in. My then you were making. Maserati does one eighty five. That's rock and roll. But that was Joe but Walsh. That's not the Eagles. That's Joe oh, Walsh solo. I lost my How license. How about the James Gang? Funk no. forty eight. That's rock and roll, bro. That's what's Walk up. Away. I'll tell you what's up. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, don't get me started on the James Gang. I was so high once uh, driving home. From Montreal to Manhattan, uh, I was doing a movie, and I said, I'm going to go back to my apartment. I rented a car, six-hour drive, and there were, we bought pot, and there was pot with PCP in it and pot that oh was regular. Oh, my God. And some of the cast uh, were just very happy with that, and I, a bit of a lightweight, was like, I can't do it. So I crushed a, a J on my way right when I crossed the border, and I'm driving through upstate New York, and I was so high. That I was only, this is true, absolutely true. I talk about it in my stand up. I was only listening to the James Gang, Rush, the police, mm -hmm. Nirvana. I was only listening to trios because in my mind, I can't put Pearl Jam in. There's five guys in the band. They're never going to fit in my stereo. I thought, like, <laughs> that's how high I was. So oh I just my God. What, what that's happened true. when it came to Meatloaf? I didn't oh. know Meatloaf when you're high. It's bad news. It's too, you, see, you hear Phil Rizzuto talking. You think you're at a Yankee game. It's all freaky. Let me sleep on it. It's too freaky. So, yeah, no, I was, I was listening to the police, and then uh, I was stripping balls, and it was snowing, and I thought it was like hyperspace. I didn't know what snow was. Damn. And it was a DUI checkpoint, and oh. I pulled over, and uh, the cop told me, go, because it wasn't a DUI checkpoint. Oh. It, was just, it was just one lane with a cop. And I made the rest of the shit up in my head. Like I, I convinced myself right, right. that I was going to jail because I yep. don't have a license for driving in hyperspace. Oh, my God. So Lita Ford. Uh, I got a speeding ticket the other day. Why? How yes, fast were you going one? in your Maserati? 22 miles over the speed limit. That's not what? Uh, in a residential? Past the school? Through the playground? No, I was on the toll road. I was driving down in San Diego. You're such an Orange County lady. I got pulled over and, uh, well, I was taking my friend back to uh, San Diego because we just did a show down there. So I was taking her back to her car, which she left in San Diego, hopped on a plane with us and went to Phoenix. And then we played Hermosa Beach. And after Herm Hermosa Beach, I had to take her back to San Diego. Why are you doing all the work? You're the boss. Well, I had the car. So I I just got a new car. It's just like being back in the runaway. So I was dry. I know. You're it the is. only one old enough to drive. It is. I Lita's love in charge. It. We went out with Rat uh, a couple months ago, or what? A couple months yeah, ago. Months. And um, I was driving the rent a car, and uh, Stephen Piercy gets out of the car and he comes over and he says, You're driving? And I said, Yeah. You got a problem with that? <laughs> I think you probably take Stephen Pearson. Said no, nope, no, no problem. No problem. He just wanted to promote his book and keep the show rolling. <laughs> Lita Ford, come back anytime. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. we'll stay in touch. We'll, we'll uh, see you on the twenty third. Numbers and uh, I'll see you at the Improv and uh, Whiskey a Go Go January 9th. is looking real good. Yeah, it's going to be hot. Do you have an opening act that you know of? I don't know. I, I I don't know. Do you pick your opening acts? Sometimes. Yeah. I, a lot of musicians I 
speak with in this garage, they go, usually it's the person with the least talent possible. And the most money. Really? And buy onto the bill. Oh, wow. Yeah, Mitch, breaking true. it down. Really? Yeah, that's true. It depends. If it's a tour. Unless you're the Stones and you have like, you know, Guns N' Roses opening for you, that probably costs yeah. the Stones a lot of money. Well, maybe. Not a lot for you them. You know what's cool? No opening act. Lights go down. Lita Ford walks out on stage. Kiss my ass. I'm here. Let's get going. You know what was cool is uh, Elton John. I went to go see Elton John in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he had these two young guys on cello that came out and they, they rocked. They were playing ACDC and U2 and all this heavy metal on Guns N' Roses on cello. On cello. And then... Um, the two guys, nobody else on stage, these two uh, from Croatia, really handsome-looking guys. Of course, Elton John's got some hot guys looking uh, and walking around. And, of course, around, if you're watching them. Hot-looking guys walking around. But uh, the two cellists broke into ACDC, and then all of a sudden the drummer starts, and then the rest of Elton John's band comes on and joins them. And the cellists just stay during the entire set for Elton John. So it's it's not really an opening act. It's just that's really cool. That's integration. Yes, it's very so cool. Maybe you should get like a, a a flute player or a flautist. Yeah, or some weird in- instrument. Something freaky a like uh, an electric uh, violin or a, a xylophone. Get or some something. Chinese phenom <laughs> violin child to go. <laughs> you don't need an opening a act. A kazoo. <laughs> yeah, just or a comb with wax paper <laughs> that we used to play as kids. Uh, a hummer. A hummer. Yeah, just <laughs> have somebody hum. I like it a lot, but when you hey! but when you say it, I'm not sure because you're you're uh, you're highly charged, Lita Ford. <laughs> this is great, as you should be. You're a rock star, and you've earned every damn moment yes, of your I time have. in the limelight. And uh, Mitch, I'm fired up. Are you, you're doing all these dates. All these all these dates will be there. Who is the hardest person you've ever toured with, Mitch? Who is somebody? Real- you know what? I don't want you to throw anybody under the bus. Keep you know what? Because those people are going to call you. Again. I'm not I know the hardest. She's not the hardest? No. You know what? This is one of the nicest. I mean, this whole band, we, we've known each other for a long time. Except that O'Brien guy. the crew working with us. Marty's the best. I'm just kidding. He's sure. the Marty's best. Kidding. I love you, Marty And O'Brien. Bobby Rock, too, our drummer. But you have a drummer named Bobby Rock? Yeah, man. Is he on the Flintstones? He's bad to the bone. And, and you can't forget our, <laughs> great, our great crew. Yeah. Do- Doogie, whose first gig was working with the James Gang. Really? Yeah, dude, he's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We got a no, great We're going to shout band. out to the roadies now? Yeah. Are yeah, they, man, we're a family. It's a family out. And how long have you guys all been together as one unit? Mm. It'd be great. She's I like 10 know. days. No, June uh June 2012 was our first tour. So this is the crew you want to ride into the sunset with? Yeah. Joan yeah. Jet, we're going to turn her around. I'm going to barrage okay. her. I'm going right. to call us Christopher Walken. I'm gonna call I can't believe you just left that message I'm on her. Call us he Harvey. literally left a message on Joan Jett's answering I'm gonna machine. Call us that Harvey was Keitel. not a joke. I'm going to call us Tracy Morgan. I'm going to call us every celebrity. I'm going to call us Norm McDonald. Okay, I'll leave you her number before I go. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna call- oh, Joan. You got to get the Runaways. We've got fans calling her management company that want the Runaways back together. You think she would do the podcast? I have no clue. It's up to her managers. She strikes me as lead singer syndrome, no? A little bit? A little bit? Lead yeah. singer syndrome? I don't know. You I, don't know? I don't know. Mitch, don't throw anybody under the bus. This is what I've learned in music. And we talked about what, it. What were we talking about again? We were talking about the fact that Joan Jett is such a valuable piece yeah. of the rock and roll community. And it would be great if Joan Jett uh, would tell her management, go f- Fuck yourselves. Yeah. I'm doing the runaway tour. Yeah. Because it's high time you guys got your due. Yeah. Are you guys in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No. And you never saw the Runaways movie? We should be. We've been offered. You Wait. You were offered we to were the offered. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you yeah. turned it down? Well, we, we couldn't get us all together. You also turned down the Surreal Life. Yeah. That was a very smart move. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, <laughs> sometimes the biggest, uh, most successful decisions you make are the ones yeah, you say yeah. no to. You don't want to be in a house with fucking Webster no. and MC Hammer no, making, uh, making uh, you know, chicken and pears. Like, no. hey, isn't this nuts? And you know what? If you were on the real, a surreal life, people would have went, why is Lita Ford on the surreal life? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was bad timing. 
Uh, so Hollywood Walk of Fame, you guys are going to get, you know, no, you guys are going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but you actually, the fucking Mick Taylor and the Rolling Stones I know. got their act together. I know. Every single band, the police, every I band. Even Sabbath. Look at Sabbath. Yes. Look how great Sabbath they're doing. Got Bill Ward to yeah. work for 2% of the gross <laughs> to agree to go to Cleveland, to go to the Rock and Hall of Fame. I mean, Tony's got cancer and, and you guys Ozzy's couldn't... got teleprompters and, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, they all I mean, do now. Mick has to read Start Me Up off oh, the teleprompter. Does because he? of the complex rhyme scheme. Re- oh, start me I up, understand. Start me up, start me up, start me up. If I... start, me up start, stop, start me up, I'll never start. Stop, start me up, Well, that's confusing. I was being very sarcastic. Well, that's confusing. Well, um, sometimes I can't remember if it's lightning or thunder on songs. There's thunder in the distance or there's lightning in the distance. You know what? Both work. They both so work. Don't worry. I, I know. Want, I don't want you to ever think that. <laughs> but then there's stage. lightning at my window or thunder at my window. I think 